let's talk about inverters. Welcome to DIY Volts, I'm Seth. Today I want to have a basics conversation on power inverters. An inverter takes DC or direct current power and converts it to AC or alternating current power. There are tons of different types of inverters, such as a micro inverter, a hybrid inverter, low frequency inverter, high frequency inverter, off grid inverters, grid tied inverters, grid tie limiter inverters, and a whole bunch more. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the basics of inverters and I will show you an example of each of those that I just mentioned. I'm gonna show you an example of these inverters here in just a moment, but let's go over a little bit of data about inverters first. There are two different types of output that inverters have, pure sine wave or modified sine wave. A pure sine wave is going to have a full wave that goes up, hits a peak, curves over, comes down, curves over again, and makes a roller coaster of a wave. The modified sign is gonna be a square wave. So it's gonna go up, cut hard, go down, and make a cut like that. So it looks like a square. Now, some electronics are very sensitive to the type of power they have. Oftentimes your computers are gonna be like this. So I recommend that you get a pure sine wave if possible that you'll have the purest power and won't have any flickering of lights or computers that uh, hum or stutter and uh, it's gonna be much better off to have a pure sine wave. Whenever you look at the spec sheet of an inverter, you may see watts, amps, and volts. It's important to know what those are and how to use them with your system. Let's start off with the watts. That's the actual power output that you can have from that inverter or it may also have the power input from solar or hydro or wind. So let's say you have an inverter that has a 2000 watt output rating. That means you can plug up an application that will use up to 2000 watts. If you go over that, you may have a short amount of time for a surge power, but the inverter will shut off after it has maxed out that wattage. Now, if you have an input wattage rating, that means your solar, hydro, or wind can input that much power into that inverter for charging the battery. That's if you have a hybrid inverter that has a charge controller built in. So that's the watts side of things. It's just the power that you can consume or put into that inverter. Now the voltage rating on an inverter will have an input and an output voltage. So for the output here in the US, it's either gonna say 120 volts or 240 volts. That's for either a single phase 120 volt receptacle or for running a 240 volt main panel or application. It'll have a uh, load one and a load two and a ground, or if it's a single phase, it'll have a hot and a neutral and a ground. Now the input voltage is typically for your battery. So let's say you're running a 12 volt, a 24 volt, 36 or a 48 volt system. Those different numbers will determine what size battery you can use. Now hybrid inverters have an additional value and that is the input voltage for the charge controller. So let's say you have a solar array rated at 450 volts, then you would want a input voltage of that inverter to be at least 500, maybe even 600 volts to accept that incoming voltage from those solar panels. Now the amperage is going to be the current or the actual flow of electrons through that machine. So let's say you have a maximum discharge current of 100 amps, then you wouldn't want to exceed that. And if you have a charging current of 100 amps, then you also wouldn't want to exceed that either. So it depends uh, the direction of the current, but your inverter will have a uh, value for current or amperage. And that's something that's very important, not only for the um, inverter's power usage, but also you have to judge your cable size appropriately so that you don't overheat those cables as you are powering up a device. That being said, you also have to make sure your battery is capable of putting out that much amperage or you will hurt the battery as well. So keep that in mind on your inverter. It's important for the watts, voltage, and amperage to be within spec or else you'll have some issues. Now before I show some examples, let's talk about the idle power consumption of an inverter. On some of these low frequency inverters, like the two behind me here, they can consume a lot of idle power, up to 150 watts, uh, especially for the Orient power. Now the Lux power over here is special. It uses about 50 watts idle consumption. 
So you may be thinking, I turn off all the lights in my house and my battery will still be nice and full in the morning, but with 150 watts of idle consumption, you may wake up with a kilowatt hour less on your battery. So keep that in mind that these low frequency inverters use a lot of power. Now a high frequency inverter doesn't use quite as much, but you're also gonna have the limitations of not being able to run as many things off of those. It's inverter example time. The first one I have is called a micro inverter. This right here does not need a DC power source for storage. It simply takes the input power from your hydro, solar, or wind directly into these MC4 connectors, and it will convert that straight into AC, 240 volts, 60 hertz, and it will send it down a trunk line and right to your meter base. So basically this takes the DC power, typically it's for solar panels. It'll take that DC power and send it straight to the grid. So if you have a bi-directional meter on your house, then it can take whatever power is coming to this micro inverter and sell it back to the grid. Now it'll also pull some of that power into your house and save you some money there as well. But these are kind of special. They are made to link up directly to arrays of solar and they will link all, uh, all of your micro inverters together and then send it off and you won't ever store this power to be used uh, later on. Next up, I have a high frequency, 12 volt, 2000 watt, pure sine wave inverter. As you can see, it's got a low profile. It's not very heavy. This is designed to run off of a car battery and run small applications, or let's say you're camping in an RV and you want to run your, uh, I don't know, a drill or a small coffee pot, this would do it. It's not designed to run your whole house because it's just not going to last as long and it's not as powerful. It's also not very good at loads that require a high startup watt. So definitely keep that in mind. This inverter is the Sun Gold Power 6000 watt output low frequency inverter. It's got a large coil inside which allows it to sustain those higher wattage loads and also accept surges in load. So if an application has a high surge startup, it'll able, it's able to uh, handle those a lot easier than a high frequency inverter. Now these are extremely heavy. Uh, I think 103 pounds for this little box right here, but it's a uh, 48 volt input and has that big 6,000 watt output. So this right here is ideal for your applications where you already have a charge controller. Although this one does have input for charging, I like to be able to see the data a little differently on this one over here, but uh, has its own application. And I'll try to leave a link for this in the description down below. The output on this inverter is 120 volts, which means you've got uh, just a single phase. And you can see my uh, poor wiring done up there, but uh, just giving you an example of what this type of inverter looks like. This inverter is the Orient Power low frequency hybrid inverter rated at 6,500 watts with a 48 volt input. It's currently running off grid. Now this inverter is hybrid, so it could accept some grid power to charge the battery. But in my system, I want it to be totally off grid and run off of solar and this battery here. So this inverter is able to take in up to 450 volts and convert that to the 51.2 volt battery and then run up to 6,500 watts off of this battery. So here in my workshop, I'm able to run pretty much anything I want to off of this, but I'm actually using this as a backup or a secondary system for some of my circuits here. This right here, I've been running for about six months and have had zero issues whatsoever. I'm still building out my system, but this is how it's working currently. Solar power comes into this breaker right here, which then goes into the charge controller portion of this inverter. It takes that power, which I should be able to scroll through here and show you. Oops, wrong direction. Currently there's 90 volts coming in because it's a very rainy day. Got 0.2 amps, 20 watts. So not much happening on this morning, but uh, that power is coming into this charge controller which is then feeding the battery. And that battery will charge up to 100%, hopefully by this afternoon. And then I'm able to use this power in my breaker box over here and run that power off grid. It's uh, powering this light up here, 
Now all the loads on this Orient power inverter and battery combo are 120 volts. So if I had anything that was requiring 240 volts, this would not do it. Next, let's move over to a 240 volt inverter. Now this big boy right here is the Lux Power 12K. It has an output of 12,000 watts and you can put 18,000 watts of solar in to this hybrid inverter. It is a 240 volt machine, which means you can have 240 volt output into a sub panel or critical loads panel and it will be able to have 6,000 watts on one leg and 6,000 watts on the other or 12,000 watts combined. It's a special inverter because it does not use but 50 watts of idle consumption power. It's got 48 volts for the nominal voltage input and this machine weighs 130 pounds. It's a uh, low frequency inverter. Very nice machine. Now whenever my big battery arrives, I'll be powering this workshop with this inverter and I'll be able to run all kinds of stuff here. So definitely look forward to uh, getting all of that system hooked up and going. Now the Lux Power is capable of doing all kinds of things. You can install CT clamps that go around the main power coming into your home and it will read that power and not push any power out into the grid. It'll only give your home the power that it needs. That's called Grid Tide Limited. It can also just do Grid Tide Power. So if you have power coming in from solar panels, it can take that power, run your home, and also send that back to the grid. So you can make money back off of the extra power that's coming in. Or you can disconnect the grid totally and run this as an off-grid system. And that's what I'm planning on doing with the Lux Power here. So lots of options. This right here is one of the best inverters on the market and I highly recommend you check them out if you're looking to have high power needs and run your home or a shop like I'm doing here. These two blue inverters behind me are called grid tie limiter inverters. They are connected to the grid using CT clamps around the two legs of the main. And that basically reads the amperage that the house is consuming. And let's say we're using five amps, then it will turn these inverters on to a point where it's pushing out the uh, wattage to feed that load. So basically it's supplementing the power I'm using from the grid. Now these are ideal for when you have grid power, obviously. They are not good for an off-grid situation. As soon as the grid power goes down, these things turn off immediately. And uh, they don't come back on until the grid is reconnected. So you've gotta have grid power in order to run grid tie limiter inverters. First of all, in this setup, I have a charge controller which takes power from the solar panels and that charges a battery. And that battery is connected up to these inverters right here and right here. And then the CT clamp goes over to the main. And from there, I don't know if there's any load in the house right now. No, no load in the house. But uh, those inverters will uh, just supplement power up to a thousand watts. I've actually got these limited down to about 700 watts each. And so let's say I turn on the cooking stove. These will ramp up to 700 watts to supplement that uh, power consumption by the stove. I currently have nine kilowatts of solar out here. As you can see, it's a very cloudy day. So not making too much power to feed these inverters. This is the Vestwoods 8K. It has an 8,000 watt output. It's a low frequency inverter that has 240 volt output. I've been using this to power my house now for well over a year and I have put over two megawatts through this machine and it has done quite well. One issue I have with this machine is that it has a 130 watt idle consumption of power, which means in the morning my 15K battery is already at 14K just from using this inverter alone. So anytime a big load turns on here in the house, it will consume even more power. So keep that in mind. It's a little easier to see the full setup with this inverter. So first of all, I have solar power going into a breaker, which goes into the charge controller. That feeds the battery and keeps that full. Same cables, these orange ones, are used to power the inverter, and that is sending uh, 240 volts to a critical loads panel, and that runs almost all of the circuits here in my home. Now, if I need to, I can flip a breaker and turn the grid on to this inverter, which will then charge the battery up. So technically it can connect to the grid.
That's just a sample of inverters that I can show you here on my own property. Now I have toured several other machines. I have seen the EG4 6000 watt in action. That was powering a small cabin off grid from both solar and hydro. I've also seen the Grow Watt. I believe that unit was a 6000 watt and that was an all hydro system and it was powering a cabin way off in the woods off grid. I've also seen a Schneider system in use. That was also a micro hydro system and they've been using that off grid for quite some time as well. But there are plenty of other manufacturers that you can check into. I hope this very basic inverter video has given you some ideas on what your system might need. I'm Seth with DIY Volts and I will see you in the next video.